You know, today I want to show why we must be faithful to our mates, to our fellow brethren, and most of all, to, of course, our great Creator God. In Latin, the title of my sermonette is Deo Fidens Persistus, being interpreted always faithful to God. And Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, the fifth edition on page 373, fidelity is defined as a careful observance of duty or discharge of obligations, especially a loyalty and adherence to the marriage contract, exactness as in a copy, synonyms being allegiance and fealty. Also in Webster's New World Dictionary, in the 1995 edition, we further see fidelity defined as, in the Latin, fides, faith, faithful devotion to duty and loyalty, an accuracy of description or a sound reproduction. Fealty, in the Latins, fidelitas, loyalty, especially as owed to a feudal lord. Now, the earliest account of fidelity that I found or faithfulness as recorded in the Bible history is in Genesis 47, verse 29. Genesis 47, verse 29, where we read, And the time drew near that Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, Now, if I have found grace in your sight, pray, I put you your hand under my thigh. And this was a way back then of maybe like taking an oath today that it is your loyalty on the line. You are promising this person. And deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray you, in Egypt. Now, it's concerned Israel asking his son Joseph, to be faithful in swearing not to bury him in Egypt after his death, but to carry him to his father's burial site. And we all know Israel had that promise kept. And all Egypt, in this first instance, along with Joseph, mourned Israel or Jacob's death, and he was carried to his family's burial site. Joseph, when his time came to die, also made his people to be faithful in not leaving his bones in Egypt. You remember the story. When the time came, as prophecy told, they would exodus from Egypt for the land promised them by God. And they carried Joseph's bones out of Egypt with them. Now God himself has declared a few of his servants, his leaders, faithful in the discharge of their duties. We read in Numbers 12, verse 7, of probably one of the most faithful human servants that Moses had. It said, My servant Moses is not so, comparing him to the other leaders that were there, in the tribe of Israel, My servant Moses, God said, is not so, who is faithful in all my house, and in Nehemiah 7, in verse 2, Nehemiah speaking, verse 2, he says, I, Nehemiah, gave my brother Hanani, and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. Why? For he was a faithful man and feared God above many. In Proverbs 20, verse 6, it makes this proclamation showing us that most men, in verse 6, Proverbs 20, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. It's usually easy for men to do that. But a faithful man, who can find, shows us, God speaking through David, just how hard it is for us to find a man who's faithful in his, do in his doings. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, asks in Matthew 24, verse 45, 
if you'll turn there with, uh, with me. In verse 45 of Matthew 24. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? The man that does his duty and his reward, we read in verse 47. Truly, Jesus says, I say to you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. The motto of the United States Marine Corps is Semper Fidelis, or Semper Fi. Always faithful. During my time in service attached to the Marines, I witnessed this unusual bonding in the heat of battle. Quoting from chapter 22 of the book Brave Men, Gentle Heroes by Michael Takif on page 497, I quote, Before evacuation, wounded servicemen were under the care of enlisted men trained to give first aid. Army, medics, and Marine Corps corpsmen, members of the Navy Hospital Corps who were attached to Marine outfits, walked the same ground, got stuck in the same mud, and were pinned down by the same firefights as the grunts who lovingly called them Doc. These loyalties and others were combat veterans were forged in the heat of battle, and they really are a prime example of what we as humans are capable of in our finest hours. I personally rather than truly believe the book of Acts is not a closed book in the annals of bib biblical history. I elder brother, Jesus set us an example of fidelity. Fidelity, extreme loyalty to a cause and a calling much higher than any human origin. In the closing statement of his introduction in Brave Men, Gentle Heroes, Michael Takif gives us an idea of what his study of the veterans in this book saw as their faithful duty to our country. On pages 12 and 13, quoting Mr. Bernard Malamud, without heroes, we are all plain people and don't know how far we can go. These 40 men have shown us how far we can go by their pursuit of not glory, but of honor, by their willingness to die for what they believed precious. Our faith shows us what God holds precious, what he sees as fidelity toward his calling. In Psalm 16 and verse 15, God says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Simon Peter, in 2 Peter 1, verse 1, Simon Peter proclaiming himself a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them, meaning us, who have obtained light, precious faith, and us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And in verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by here you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Starting with our fidelity to God, we, brethren, can go on to add to that, to that virtue, and add to virtue knowledge, as Peter shows us the progression with the aid of God's Holy Spirit that helps us know, we can know that this loyalty, this loyalty, this fidelity to God is not in vain. Reading also in 2 Peter 1, going down to verse 10, it's not in vain. Because wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, if you're faithful, if you add to your faith the other things, you shall never fall. For an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are many examples of faithfulness, actually, which is another definition of fidelity in the Bible. There is the fidelity of our marriages. God instituted the marriage covenant 
In Genesis 2, when he did the operation on Adam and the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, Now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. For she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, God said, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. And both the man and the woman were naked and the man and his wife and they both were not ashamed. I personally believe this form of commitment goes deeper than just a person's mind. It's something God helps man develop with the aid of his Holy Spirit and supports God's laws which actually do, brethren, guide us and show us how to avoid mistakes and to be happy, to be happy. God's law is indeed a light to our path and a lamp to our way, our, way, our feet as we walk that path. In marriage, God inspired Paul to instruct husbands to love their wives as their own bodies. Ephesians 5 verse 29 shows this. Paul knew for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it even as the Lord does the church. In verse 33, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. This is marital fidelity, and it mirrors our fidelity toward one's friends and one's brethren. Philippians 2 speaks of this in verse 1. Turning to Philippians 2 and verse 1, it says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill you my joy that you may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Be loyal, be loyal in that way. Also in 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 9. It says, But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, you do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia, says Paul. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Probably because the persecutions were increasing and they were going to need this kind of closeness to come through this together. They were going to have this fidelity toward their brethren. And you know, we can all recount in the past growing up that one special friend, probably it was only one, we could depend on no matter what, you know, to come to our aid in trouble or just as I've said before, just to sit quietly with us, with us while we cried our hearts out over some matter of hurt. Hopefully we ourselves have been this kind of friend, as Mr. Jackson pointed out in one of his earlier sermonettes. They said a true friend builds up, supports, listens, speaks up in love to point out things needed to be said. Actually, brethren, all these things mentioned here also work in a marriage because our spouses all should, should be our best friends. And they all tie in to our overall loyalty towards God. God has shown earlier, he picked men to serve who showed fidelity, that firm, lasting commitment to keep faithful service, semper fi, as the Marines have said. To accomplish their mission on this earth, these men had to be faithful to their Creator. In Revelation, the church of Smyrna, whether actually at the time or prophetically, became symbolic of being the most persecuted church they were told this by Jesus Christ in Revelation 2, in Revelation 2 and verse 8. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive, 
I know your works. And tribulation, poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy, blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which shall you suffer. And behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you might be tried. And you shall have tribulation ten days. Hey, listen, brethren. He said, be faithful. Be you faithful unto death. And I will give you a crown of life. Brethren in Christ, the ecclesia, the body of Christ, the called and the chosen, the servants of the Most High God, we, we the ecclesia, have a duty and a sacred obligation to make our calling sure, to always find ourselves faithful to the one who called us to eternal life through the goodness and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Deo fidens persistus, always faithful to God, fidelity to our God forever and always.